Hello everyone, this is my review of the Champion Model 100520 generator. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing this generator as well as, um, un well it's already sort of unboxed, but installing it, setting it up and showing everyone um, what I'm going to do with it. Uh, so first off, why did I get this generator? Um, I live in Texas and I was here when the snowpocalypse of 2021 happened and I'm not really interested in repeating that again. Um, I had an old generator here, this one right here, this Duramax, uh, which was really great for keeping me through the, uh, the storm. Um, unlike everyone else in the neighborhood, I was able to at least uh, have a few lights on and also um, plug my um, hot water heater, uh, which is uh, which is a gas hot water heater, uh, into this. It, it needed electricity to run the computer and whatnot um, that it has uh, to to turn on the the tankless uh, hot water. Uh, but this was great for that. But um, I just uh, didn't want to go through that again. I I rather have something uh, much more permanently set up. Um, this is not a permanent unit, but uh, it would work a lot better. So I installed a generator inlet port and uh, I determined that my max amount of energy usage is going to be somewhere um, in the five to 7,000 uh, watt range. Uh, this is with the uh, uh, central AC on. Um, the only thing that I couldn't do with this thing is have uh, AC, um, the dryer and the stove on at the same time, which in an emergency situation, I don't need. Um, so I just wanted to size this up to provide enough power for all that um, and have it actually plug into the house so I don't have to go run extension cords everywhere. Uh, so this is the unit I ended up purchasing. Why did I end up choosing this unit? Well, a few things. One is that I wanted um, an inverter generator. Um, Looking at the other generators, uh, though they're uh, slightly cheaper um, and they uh, could produce more power for uh, the price you pay, um, those generators are not good for sensitive equipment. Um, basically, with the other generators, uh, if the motor starts spinning slower, you're not getting um, perfect uh, 60 hertz of electricity. There's things called uh, harmonics, THD, I think. Um, that uh, comes into play and that um, could ruin your electronics. I'm not an uh, electrical engineer, so I can't go into the details of that, but I did a, quite a bit of reading on that. Uh, so I chose this model. Uh, the other reason why I chose it is this model is compatible with a motor snorkel, uh, which is a, um, a third-party add-on that you can go connect um, propane or um, natural gas which will come in handy uh, in an emergency if you know you want more ways to power this thing than just uh, gasoline. Uh, so it, it seemed great for that. Uh, the other thing that I liked about this model is that you can um, disconnect it, uh, disconnect the neutral. So because I'm plugging it directly into the house, um, this thing needs to be floating neutral. Uh, you don't want to be running floating neutral when it's um, a standalone unit. Uh, you need to ground a neutral connected. But for plugging into the house, you only want one point of um, binding the neutral on the ground. And that's going to happen at the power box, um, at the electrical panel. So, yeah, I wanted to make sure that this was able to do floating neutral, that it was an inverter generator, so it won't damage any of my equipment um, or any of my electronics. And uh, that it can plug into, I mean, it could use other gas sources with add-ons. Um, this thing met all those um, features I was looking for, uh, so that's why I chose it. Um, so let's get right down to uh, getting this installed in and uh, getting it all ready. Um, so first we'll take a look at what's in the box. The generator's in the box. Uh, it comes with wheel set and uh, handle, raw DC adapter. Yeah, there's a 12 volt uh, port in the front and you can connect that raw DC. Comes with a USB adapter, if you so wanted that. Um, and then the wheel kit. 
So I am going to be setting this all up right now. So the first thing we have to do is remove the shipping brackets that hold the generator in place. It needs to be able to vibrate and move around when the generator is running. So those are here. I don't know if you see these orange things here. Look at this out here. Here's the shipping brackets. So to put the wheel on, uh, you get the axle or whatever it's called. You put it through um, from the outside and the pin goes on the inside. So you just get the wheel up. Slip that in like so. Then you just place the pin in. Just push that in. That locks into place. After you get the wheels on, you gotta flip it over and install this supporting bracket. Right here. Lastly, we flip this over again and install the handle. This is the supporting bracket. This is now mobile. That's the handle. Here's the handle. Black and black. It's gonna be hard to see. And our portable generator is now portable. Next step is we have to connect the battery camera died and stopped recording for some reason. But after you put the brackets on, you just have to screw in this screw here. Um, so this is disconnected. You just unscrew this thing, connect this thing in. So after we screw on the battery terminals, all we have to do is fill this up with oil. We can do that with the funnel that comes with the generator. All you have to do is unscrew so oil check, oil fill area, stick the funnel in, and fill it up. One nifty feature about this generator 
is that it has a convenient oil um, drainage system. All you have to do is undo this and then unscrew this and you can pour this straight into a oil um, drainage basin. You don't have to flip this thing over or worry about draining this with some sort of nut that's <laughs> in a hard reach place and getting oil everywhere. So that's really nice. All right, now I'm gonna convert this into a floating neutral unit. Um, they say first take off the spark plug. So that's here. And then let's do some work on the front panel. All right, on the front of the panel, we just have to unscrew a few things. By the way, I'll leave instructions for this in the links. Um, I'm looking at Champion's instructions for another unit, another inverter unit. I'm assuming that it's gonna look pretty similar in here. the white and green. Okay, it's this guy here. Need another screwdriver. Okay, so I'll show you guys. Behind here, we have this yellow, and I can't see it too well, but half of this cord is green on this side. Um, and that's bonded to the neutral here. So we just have to unscrew this thing and um, put electric tape on the white and this would be ungrounded or not ungrounded, I'm sorry uh, This would be a floating neutral and then I'll test with a multimeter to confirm So yeah, let me just test right now. Multi-meter with me. We'll just set this multimeter on continuity, so this continuity will beep. So we'll check ground and neutral. Yes, yeah, I check. Okay, so right now we see that the ground and neutral are tied. I forget which one's ground and neutral for the fourteen. 30 jack. Well, that size ground. 
So right now ground and neutral is tied. And let me take this off. Take neutral off. Put ground back on. Screw this back in. Now let's check ground and neutral again. No continuity. We have a floating neutral. Ah, it's floating. Check from the front. No continuity. Ground and neutral has been broken. So we just button this back up and then we're done. So just so I won't forget or someone else uses the um, generator, I'm going to cover up the neutral bonded to frame with a floating neutral label. So everyone will know that's floating neutral. And then we just go back in and reconnect the spark plug. And we're all set. Let's fire it up and see how it goes. One last step before you start. So you have to flip this to this way or else um, it won't let any fuel through. Okay, um, then you pull the choke out and then you give it a shot. my power setup have the generator inlet port and a mechanical interlocked breaker here uh, so that I can't back feed into power to the, to the utility company so let's uh, turn off power to the house uh, all right 
no power to the house. Let's plug this guy in. All right, so that's in there. Grab this guy. Okay, everything's plugged in. I'm gonna switch us to generator power now. Oh, <laughs> you can hear the generator working. All right, now let's go inside and see if the lights are on. So as you can see, we are able to power the house from the generator. Here's the lights on. Um, the most important thing that I want to do is get the HVAC working with the generator. Uh, but unfortunately, that didn't go so well. Um, when I tried doing it, the power went out. So I'm probably going to have to install a soft start um, uh, system. But it, it, what it does, it makes it so that it reduces the inrush uh, when you're starting uh, the compressor um, from idle. Um, it takes up a lot of electricity. Um, I'm going to have to look more into that, but I'll, I'll post a video when I do. Uh, right now, I'm going to show that we are powering the house. We're doing around 637 watts. Let me check out the heat. That should work. So if I didn't mention before, I have a gas, a natural gas heater, natural gas furnace. So it shouldn't take too much electricity. Just enough electricity to turn on the blowers and all that. Okay, the... Uh, Fans just kicked in. So we're running all this off of the generator. So that's great. Um, so I guess the primary thing that I'm looking for if uh, the snowpocalypse happens again, uh, I'll at least have power and I'll at least have the ability to run my, my uh, furnace. I was not able to do this last time. So this is actually very important. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, my setup for the Champion uh, generator. It's a great inverter generator. Um, I'm happy to be able to have all my electronics running on this and not worry about uh, power fluctuations and uh, harming my equipment. Um, I'm hoping that I never have to use this, but in the case of uh, the next outage, I'll have uh, all this available. Um, so yeah, um, I probably will s s do two more videos. One about soft start, and if I ever get a chance to it, I'm also gonna do a video on uh, installing a motor snorkel and getting this to work with uh, propane or natural gas. Thanks for watching guys, bye.